Morning, Weld. Oh. What's this? Well, that'll get some bifocals. <laughs> Dear sir, I regret that we at the London Tourist Board cannot include 17 railway terrorists in our tourist guide as we are unable to find evidence that William Shakespeare did what you said he did to Anne Hathaway in your coal cellar. <laughs> well, it's worth a try, wasn't it? It wasn't my idea, tell you the truth. It was my mate Tosh's idea. He reckons that if we bunged an old slumberland down there in a pair of Elizabethan knickers on the wall, these little kamikaze tourists would be around here clicking away like good ones. Oh, <laughs> Well, then they'd all purchase their novelty cod pieces and chips and go away well pleased, wouldn't they? Would have been a good idea if it had worked. Might have put some life in this old place. I mean, have a look at it. I'll see more life in a pint of homemade bitter. It's really gone downhill, this street, you know. Old Granny Grub told me that when she pops off, she wants to be taken round the corner because she don't want to be seen dead in a dump like this. <laughs> now, years ago, all these doors would be open, wide open, wouldn't they? And wherever you went, they'd say, come in and help yourself. Of course, in them days, they had nothing to offer, did they? So it didn't matter a great deal. <laughs> but every house had a mat outside with welcome on it. Now all the doors are locked, and if you ring a doorbell, a recorded voice says, sod off. <laughs> Still, could be worse, I suppose. Could be living in Milton Keynes, which I very nearly did. You didn't. I kid you not. You jest. I jest not. <laughs> it started one morning when I got this letter. Dear Madam, 17 Railway Terrace, structurally unsafe. Considerable renovation required immediately. The roof and exterior. 500 quid. It's a con job. This gaff's as solid as a rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> Jimbo! Little prezzy for you, mate. Tosh, if you're trying out some international scrap swindle, do us a favour, try out on someone else. Hello, hello. What's with the woeful boat race and a Sobany Hobson's choice? Don't tell me. Joan Collins has found out about Bo Derrick and given you the elbow. <laughs> this is serious, Tosh. Then while he's down accounts, we'll put a compulsory purchase order on my house, aren't they? I reckon it's falling down, becoming a dangerous structure. What is that? It's a piece of your roof. Just missed me, it did. Some slates out there and all. Do you want me to fetch them in? Tosh, if you're going to bring everything in that falls off the outside of the house, by tonight you're going to have the house inside out, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to get £500 for immediate repairs. Use your loaf, Jimbo. Artie Johnson's uncle will do the whole lot for 50 sobs and a crate of vino. Yeah, Artie Johnson's uncle did the lot last time, didn't he? That's the problem. Half of them tiles up there are kitchen floor tiles, aren't they? <laughs> That's why the council tumbled me. I'm the only house in the street with a black and white roof. <laughs> I think I'll go and see Councillor Moggs get a stay of execution. If I know Arnie Moggs, he'll stay your execution just long enough to get himself a front seat. Yeah, you're probably right, mate. Still, wish me luck. Don't need luck, mate. Need a bloody miracle. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> what a pity. <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor. You're a sympathetic word at a time like this. means so much. No, I'm so sorry to hear that you can't raise the money. <laughs> You've got to uh, sell the house, <laughs> move away. Excuse me, man. Mr. Moggs, I know you could use a bit of your influence. Um, would it help if I said please? Uh, yes. I think it might. It might. Please. No, sorry, it doesn't help at all. <laughs> Now, um, wait a minute. I, I, I do have a friend, actually. You surprised me. <laughs> a lady, uh, Mrs. Richards. She might be the answer. Oh, she do roof repairs as an hobby? No. No, no, she's looking for a little bijou slum in this area to convert into her town cottage. She'll pay you a bit more than the compulsory purchase price, and she's a lady of some culture. And might lift up the tone of the district. Well, what about me? You? You don't lift up the tone of the district. 
can't even zip up your own trousers. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I wonder that woman on the bus offered to pay me fair. <laughs> Look, where am I going to go? Well, there's plenty of other places. Like where? <laughs> Milton Keynes. <laughs> Richard's bars the ass. Where will you go? Moggs, he reckons Milton Keynes. Yeah, he's a cruel man, that Moggs. You yeah. can move in with me. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks, Wanda. But yeah, can you imagine what would happen if your stand found out? Oh, yeah. Oh, it'd be just like a Barbara Cartman story. And I'd have to teach you to walk again. <laughs> <laughs> then one day you'd recognise me. And, and... you right over the head with my plaster cast. Oh. Oh, well, you could have your old room back, son. But it'd take me six weeks to clear me pigeons out. Oh, Jim, <laughs> there's a message for you from my governor. He said, be sure to pop in and see him before you leave. I bet he wants to give you a little farewell, Prezzy. <coughs> no, he wants to make sure you don't leave owing him money. Oh. Sentimental fool that he is. I'm going to miss him, and I, when I'm in Milton Keynes. Well, blimey, if it's that bad, we'll have to do something about it. You can come and live in our house. What I'm talking about is a joint enterprise. A concerted effort. Why do you think they call this place the Freemasons? I thought it was named after three geezers called Mason. <laughs> it's named after the great brotherhood, the Freemasons. In here, we're all brothers. I must get some better makeup. Obviously, this isn't working. <laughs> Look, what we do is club together, right? Pull all our spare cash and give it to Jim till he gets on his feet again. Yeah. Right, now, how much do you need? 500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've seen the place, Mrs Richards. What do you think? Well, I don't suppose any one of your generation can understand how a person could fall in love with something really horrible and decrepit. Oh, I don't know. I used to have a thing going with a barmaid down a red cow. <laughs> she was old and decrepit, yeah, getting on a bit, you know. They reckon on a cold morning without any makeup on, she could frighten a police dog. <laughs> Still, for three pints of lager every night and a turkey sandwich, she was beautiful. Yes. I'm not sure I appreciate the analogy, so we won't dwell on it, if you don't mind. If I decide to buy your house, I shall require immediate possession, you understand. Does that mean I've got to move out straight away? Well, we could hardly live together, could we? Oh, I don't know. If you'd have seen that bar, mate, down the red cow, you... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, just I, I've got nowhere to go. There's always Milton Keynes. You've been speaking to that councillor friend of yours, haven't you? Mr Moggs is not my friend. He was a friend of my dear departed husband, Alderman Richards, who was also an obnoxious little creep. Oh, do you know Mrs Richards? I like you. But you'll still have to move out, Mr. London. Now, I must go, but I'll be back later to let you know definitely. Uh, just a minute. What about my sitting tenant? Well, I don't suppose he'll stay long if we leave the roof off for a few days. Bye. <laughs> what did I think of that? <laughs> Hello. What the hole in the head game planning now then, eh? <laughs> Lightning raid on your outside toilet paper and light bulbs. <laughs> They're trying to raise money to save Jim's ass. They've just had a raffle round the other bar. Oh yeah? What did they raffle? A stolen guide dog? <laughs> you know that raffles are illegal, Brian. You could lose your licence. It's not my licence. It's my governor's. But if it was my pub, I'd have a sign up here saying slimy little gits not allowed. Good for you, Brian. <laughs> that'll fix the fellows. <laughs> well, that's uh, eight quid profit from the raffle. Who won the bottle of whiskey? Um. Oh, old Tom the Winkle Man. Who's old Tom the Winkle Man? <laughs> Why, it be me, my dear. Do you want to see my credentials? No, thanks. I'm right off luxury. I'll sooner see our bottle of whiskey. What else we got? Oh, well, now, here's 20 quid that my Stan gave me for his coming out party, bless yeah, him. Yeah. I didn't know Stan was getting out. No, but the screws did. That's why I was staying in. And there's a four quid I got for converting my liquid assets. What are they? Two crates of empties. Oh. 
<laughs> and there's a tenner I got from a Japanese tourist for the sign hanging up outside of Duke's head. He was well pleased with that. Last time I saw him, he was trying to bollow a rudder. Well, there's hardly much more here than 50 quid. I mean, Jim won't get much of his roof mended for that. There's hardly enough here to send a man up a rudder. Yeah, well, I might have the answer to this. A little bit of information I got this morning off a mate of mine whose brother is shacked up with a woman whose mother does three days cleaning for Lester Pickett's auntie. <laughs> Hey, what's all this about then? I thought selling the house took for ages, like, uh, well, like having a baby or uh, phoning directory inquiries. So it does, Mr. London, during which time the property could <clears throat> become unsafe and derelict. So my solicitors, Mendelbaum, 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 and. Mendelbaum? Thank you. Just a guess. Have drawn up this contract which transfers the property to me during negotiations. Now, don't worry, you're perfectly safe. Read it for yourself before you sign it, if you wish. Right. Cool. Here to four, where to four, why to four, six to four, eyes down, the runner start as all. <laughs> oh, it don't make a difference, does it, as long as it's going to a good home? Well. Thank you. Now, all we need are two witnesses to make it legal. Hey, we got it, son! It's in the bag, Jimbo! We'll keep it in the bag for God's sake, there's a lady present. <laughs> Two solid citizens, just in time. Would you mind witnessing this document for us? Oh, uh, my pleasure, Mrs. Ignatius a. P. A. Pendlebury Junior. There you go. It's kosher, Tosh. Oh, sorry, my mistake. <laughs> L. Get that out of it. L. O. N. It's all right. I know. <laughs> Is this your father? Well, I keep asking for a blood test, but no one listens. <laughs> well, I must be off. I'll be back tomorrow to make notes for the decorators. Bye. Well, that's it then. That's the house gone. All signed, sealed and delivered. What do you mean that bit of paper yeah, was... Yeah, do yeah. you know something? We've got a 500 notes. God oh, blimey, we knocked ourselves out getting 50 together. Then your dad put it on a 10 to 1 winner at ADOC. What? Blimey, 500 sobs waiting in the betting shop to be collected and we missed it by a short head. You have let me down badly, son. I mean, where am I going to go when your mother starts setting about me, eh? I'm going to walk about the streets fatally wounded. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Where am I going to stash me iffy gear when the old Bill's after me? I can just see me forgetting, wandering in here with a few cartons of bent silk cuts. You'll take one look. Oh, dear, I fell into a thieves kitchen. <laughs> She'll be off like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> I've got it. Do you know, I've got it. I'm a genius. Oh, I can't handle this. Now he thinks he's a genius and he's got it. Artie Johnson's uncle's got it and he's practically an idiot. <laughs> Don't you see? We give the place a bad name. Put the frighteners on her. Scare the sh... I've got a great idea, me. I'll get the other two at it and all. Oh, I'll get wondering. Oh, God, dear. Oh. Yeah. I blame all that free orange juice myself. I had it and all, you know. I rest my case. <laughs> listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. She's not going to believe you're running a brothel next door, is she? If she comes in here and finds me and you having a session, she won't believe us, will she? Why not? I say I'm playing away this week. <laughs> oh. Bonda, look, please, look, go on, off it, off oh. it. We've got things to do. Now, listen, listen. As soon as Brian and Dad go, I'll kick your front door, then in you come, right? Right. Okay? Now, when I say thieves and villains, let Tosh off the leash. Don't worry, lover. I won't let you down. I will be sensational. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Oof. Right, it's Brian, Dad, Wanda, Tosh, Bingo, Adios, Mrs. R. Oh, eyes down. Oh, hello, Mrs. Richards, you got here all safe and sound and unmugged, all right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's only a shanty in old shanty town. The walls are all oh, well. It's such in that ground. It's just a couple of the drunks, the local pub, you know, you get that all the time. Don't the other residents complain? They are the residents. It's calling me back. I see yeah, look, I, I should have warned you about it. I mean, if you want to change your mind and forget it, I understand fully. A real Cockney song, yeah. sung in the street by real Cockneys. I've got all Charles and Dave's records. Would they mind if I join in? Well, this is a nice turn up at a book, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
she likes us. I was putting it on, but your old man really is Elephant's trunk. Well, it's all right, Elephant's trunk. Separate, but God's sake, before he falls in love with her. Come on, Eric. Come on, son. 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 Come you come up with a rubber dump Saturday night, and we'll have a proper news up. Yeah, yeah. Right, see you there. Right. Only old Shanty, <laughs> old Shanty. <laughs> yeah, look, uh... Real, genuine London life on my doorstep. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, wonderful. Look, uh, Mrs Richards, I've just got to tell you, it's not all... It's not all... Dancing on the streets round here, you know, I mean, there, there's a real, um, see me sight the life round here, you know. Yeah. Why did you kick that door, Mr. London? Don't you like it? Tradition. It's, uh, in memory of a great old Cockney saint. Yeah. Uh, Saint Doris the door kicker. How quaint. I do love these old Cockney traditions. Do you know any more? Yeah, there's one that's catching on round here. It's called being turfed out of your house if your roof leaks. <laughs> I wonder who that is. A bit early for carol singers, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. I didn't know you was entertaining. Uh, Jim, lover, could you take care of these little luncheon vouchers for me? I'm expecting a raid from the vice squad. Oh. <laughs> Wanda, this is Mrs Richards. She's the new tenant. Uh, Wanda runs the... Restaurant next door. For tired businessmen and their little luncheon vouchers. <laughs> Why would the vice squad want to raid a restaurant? Oh, some of the dishes are a little bit unusual. Oh, some of the dishes are incredible. When Susan and Maria pop out of that egg custard, <laughs> certainly steams their glasses up. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Mrs. Richards doesn't want to hear all this. Oh, well, not now, perhaps, but I mean, uh, ten years ago, she could have been on the menu. <laughs> not the chef special, perhaps, but great little starter. <laughs> This lady is not running a restaurant. She is running a bawdy house. How did you find out so quickly? <laughs> oh, whoops! Oh, have I said something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. I better be going because if I'm not there to let the vice squad in, they always knock the door down. <laughs> Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> it's absolutely scandalous. Yeah. But such fun. <laughs> I shall invite all my friends and we shall have listening parties. We'll sit on the floor with our glasses against the wall. Oh, such decadence. Mabel Watkins' jacuzzi just won't stand a chance. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! Happy day! Oh, dear. What did you say, oh, dear? Well, um, look, Mrs. Richards, I'll, I'll come clean with you, all right? Look, living round here is not all... Not all beer and Skittles, you know, and playing Listen with Wanda and her playmates. No, I mean, this is a right hotbed of, uh, of, of thieves and villains. <laughs> I'm glad I've told you now. I've got it off my chest. What kind of thieves and villains? Oh, real thieves and villains. <laughs> you know, ones who do thieving and, uh, and villainy. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, I've told you now, because uh, if you just want to tear up that contract and walk away, I, I ain't long goodbyes. <laughs> Jimbo, you've got to help me. <laughs> I've got a hundred thousand silk cuts from that warehouse job last night. I want to leave them here till the heat's off. Uh, Tosh, Tosh, this is... This is Mrs. Richards, the new tenant. She owns the house now. Oh! Listen. <laughs> I've got a hundred thousand silk cups I and I... I think we've met before. Ignatius P. Pendlebury Jr., if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> One of my many aliases. But you can call me Tosh. Or if you prefer the old Bill's description, Tosh Carey, master criminal. Do not approach this mare. In the summer, his socks are lethal. <laughs> what 
What sort of things do you steal? Only the finest merchandise, my dear. Whether it be a humble electric toaster from the mysterious East or a bottle of perfume from Gay Paris. Nothing but the best. Could you... <laughs> Could you get me some Chanel number no. five? No problem. Uh, one bottle of Chanel number no. five, uh, family size with free gift, and um, how you fixed up for 98 proof vodka video nasties and aftershave? Or how about a nice little portable telly for your new home? Why? Have you got one? No, but the telly shop in the high street's got a van load round the back. I'll go and get you one now. Oh, happy day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Milton Keynes, here I come. Will your friend belong? Well, the last time he got a telly, he was six months, so I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs> oh. Mrs. Richards, welcome to Railway Terrace. Or may I be so bold as to predict the future and say, welcome to Arthur Ratthrasher Gardens. What are you talking about, Councillor Moggs? Well, you see, dear lady, uh, Arthur Ratthrasher was a much respected member of the local council. Now, alas, passed on. Must have been a merciful release with a name like Ratthrasher. <laughs> Some of us on the council have a dream to renovate this area in his honour. We will gradually evict the peasants and replace them with gentry such as yourself. Oh, get another half a dozen of her down here, Tosh will have to take on extra staff. <laughs> but I like this place just as it is. Imagine, dear lady, if you will, this whole terrace equipped with identical Kentucky oak doors, Georgian bottle glass window. I hate bottle glass windows. She'd have to get you to them, would she, Councillor? Yeah, it's possible. We're going to have a gate at either end to keep out the drunks and the riffraff and the police de resistance will be a life-size statue of Councillor Ratthrasher himself, inscribed with his famous saying, Send them all back! <laughs> Councillor Moggs, I am trying to remain ladylike, so I'll just say you can take your statue and put it outside your own house. I won't have it outside mine. It will be outside my own house, actually. What? Then you know, he lives next door, actually. <laughs> Bottle glass windows, Arthur Rat Thrasher, and this is too much. I'm sorry, Mr. London. Would you be so kind as to phone me a taxi? Be a pleasure. Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Away from this house and this person. Hello, taxis. Here, 17 Railway Terrace, Elephant Castle. Yeah, quick scan. Where t Milton Keynes. <laughs> Thank you.